Who would have thought? But this was actually really nice. Hell yeah. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and instead of dropping or dumping it on HBO Max or just Max, thankfully Blue Beetle is getting a theoretical release after all. Why thankfully? Because I think it's a pretty good, fun and heartfelt and at least somewhat fresh new superhero movie. And also one that's doing a lot in terms of representation. And I think and I hope that the Latino community will have a blast with this one. Blue Beetle was directed by Anthel Manuel Soto, written by Gareth Daniel Alcosta, and it's the 14th and second to last installment in this incarnation of the DC Extended Universe. And here's another thankfully, because thankfully it's basically a standalone movie. The only connections are dropping the name Superman and our protagonist wearing a sweater that says Gotham. But if you want to, you could just pretend that it's not really this DCEU's Gotham or Superman. And indeed, I think it has been confirmed that this Blue Beetle will be taken over to James Gunn's new universe. There are also no after credit shenanigans tying it to some old stuff. There are after credit shenanigans, but both the mid and after credit scene are all about Blue Beetle stuff. And you should definitely wait for it. But let's go back to the beginning. Going into this, I had really no idea about this character at all, or even what to expect from this movie in particular. I didn't even watch a trailer, at least not consciously. My connection and entry point was solely lead actor Sholo Mariduena, who I of course have seen in 5 awesome seasons of Cobra Kai. He is pretty wonderful here, because he's just really good at playing this genuine good-hearted guy. He's just so naturally likable. Not too unlike Peter Parker. Someone with a good heart, but who has to deal with a lot of problems in his personal life. At the beginning of the movie, Jaime Reyes isn't yet Blue Beetle, but just another young graduate who's coming back home. But things at home aren't as great as he assumed, and no one dared to tell him yet. His father had a heart attack a while ago, and they are also about to lose their family home. And speaking about money, the very first little joke we get in the movie is a stranger straight up telling our happy just graduated protagonist that he is in six figure debt now. So right from the get go it's pretty clear that this Blue Beetle movie has some kind of social conscience. And you know me, a superhero movie that's actually dealing at least somewhat with some kind of social issue and featuring a hero that's good hearted and kind and I'm already sold to some degree. Blue Beetle is a film that wears its heart on its sleeve, and it feels genuine and touching. When it comes to all the superhero stuff, it's really not all that special or groundbreaking, but overall it still feels personal enough and the characters always shine. At least the good ones. The villains are a bit too generic, at least for the majority of the movie, until we get a super late flashback that helped to give the muscle guy of the villain a bit more personality. But the lady in charge is played by Susan Sarandon and while she brings enough juice to the role, the character is still fairly uninteresting and flat. And her brawler, who is the one who is doing the fighting, is pretty standard as well. Rahul Max Trujillo can be menacing and the stuff at the end worked for me. But it's also nothing too fresh and honestly he has to wear one hell of an ugly ass supervillain outfit. Our superhero on the other hand can also look pretty silly, but at least this movie has a more tangible, more practical touch to it. And the silly notion is also not too bad, because I honestly dig this kind of Saturday morning cartoon vibe the movie's going for. It's kind of retro and there's even a Nintendo power glove in there. And it's not hidden or anything, but you will recognize it immediately. The action in Blue Beetle isn't that memorable or extraordinary I would say. There's one cool scene in which they use a giant bug ship that's pretty neat, but a lot of the fighting is just alright. It's also not bad at all, but I wouldn't call it the movie's strong point either. The movie's strong point, or one of its strong points, is the family of Jaime, and that's why I'm coming back to the characters. Whenever Blue Beetle is focusing on Jaime, his family and the relationship with the film's love interest Jenny, played by Bruna Marcassine, it really shines. In most superhero cases someone gets their powers in secret and then tries to hide it from his or her loved ones as best as they can. But here that strange alien scarab has chosen and is taking over Jaime right in front of his family. So from the get go everyone totally knows about it. 
and not only knows about it, but the family aspect is a central element in the narrative, and the rescue mission headed by the family is one of the absolute highlights. George Lopez is playing Jaime's Uncle Rudy, and not only does he have a lot of the jokes on his side, but he turns out to be an actual pretty good sidekick. Damian Alcazar plays Jaime's father, and he definitely brings the feels. The early scene where he talks to his son and tells him about having a purpose in life is really nothing new and it's totally in the tradition of Uncle Ben and other key figures in superhero lore. But if it's done right, that doesn't matter that much. And here, it's done right. And I kid you not, I really teared up watching this. It's an emotional movie and a crowd-pleasing movie with a lot of fun and also empowering moments. I do think it has its flaws. I for example thought the whole banter and symbiosis between Jaime and that alien scarab could have been handled better. Early on there are also one or two too many coincidences where someone is bumping into someone else exactly at the right time. And I also wasn't the biggest fan of the finale taking place at this rather dark, generic and dirty secret research facility. Especially since I overall thought the movie has a pretty nice style and cool setting. While Superman has Metropolis, Batman has Gotham and The Flash has Central City, Blue Beetle is set in the fictitious Palmera City. The movie has a cool mix of neon colors and yet a warm and inviting atmosphere as well, which also goes for the pretty awesome soundtrack. The background score was done by Bobby Krillick, aka the Hexen Cloak, and it's this gorgeous, pumping electronic score that I can't wait to listen to again once the soundtrack gets released. Right now, there's only the Blue Beetle suit available on Spotify, which I listen to on repeat while writing this review. And which is so awesome that I almost wanted to give the movie a perfect 10 out of 10. But apart from this electronic score, then the movie also has these many Latino songs, which I obviously am not familiar with, but gave the film its own identity. And I'm sure people will have a lot of fun with. So in German I'd say, Blue Beetle hat einfach Herz. Der Familienfokus berührt und macht Spaß, der Retro-Look wirkt charmant und der Soundtrack ist killer. Da verzeiht man ihm auch locker die paar Schwächen. I give Blue Beetle 7 out of 10. It's more like 7.4, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Blue Beetle. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd Notes on Patreon, simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell. Mm -hmm.